Hello, welcome to Exotic Gardening UK, Yorkshire Chris Weekly. And in this week's episode, we're going to be talking about Tetrapanax and the various forms they have. So, Tetrapanax and Tetrapanax rex and the other forms, very confusing subjects because it, they're very, very similar looking plants and most people in the buyer Tetrapanax look for the name rex because I think that's the best one to buy and it's a very catchy name. T-rex, Tetrapanax rex, very easy to remember and you think of a great big plant and yes, Tetrapanax and its forms do grow very large huge leaves and can get to a decent size like the one behind me that's standing at around three meters tall at the moment and that can get much much bigger and there's lots of confusion because people want rex i think that is the best form to get the best type well in fact tetrapanax is actually just one species it's just one plant with various forms and the various forms mean it's been either the seeds collected from different areas or when seeds have been grown various different attributes can be seen so have bigger leaves longer leaves taller different types of covering on the stems of the leaves as well so you're probably thinking i want to grow a tetrapanax rex because that's the form that you see all over the internet that's what everybody calls the species tetrapanax papyrifera well, in fact, basically, most people who grow Tetrapanax rex are actually growing Tetrapanax papyrifera, the straight species. And that is because everything's been labelled rex because it's a memorable name and it's easy to sell as that. So if you go back a bit in history, Tetrapanax papyrifera has been grown or been known about for a very long time. So like 100 or so years and probably more than that. And it's been grown on and off in sort of botanical gardens and it's been grown thinking it's sort of a half hardy maybe even a tender plant at first because of its exotic nature and that is true to some, expect, uh, to some extent because it's not truly hardy in all its forms because sometimes we can kill by minus five minus ten at least to ground level um, but then over the years there's been other forms collected from Taiwan and some have proved to be hardy, so from up altitude in the mountains, and have survived minus 15 or even lower. So there are some variation. And the hardier forms, and the ones with the biggest leaves, get the most attention. And a form brought back in 1993 by crew plants from Taiwan was named as Rex because it had bigger leaves and it proved to be hardier. And a certain actual plant from that seed collection was actually named as rex although all those from that seed collection were then given the name rex so it's a bit of confusion there so basically lots of seeds were brought back they were all grown some of them went to various different locations and it was named rex the one with the biggest leaves was named rex uh, because all the seeds were brought back at the same time, well, all the other seedlings could be called Rex as well because it was from the same seed collection. But basically, it's only those seedlings that had those really big leaves that were named Rex and then propagated year after year since 1993 onwards that are the true original Rex with big leaves. But all the other seedlings from that point that were propagated and go to different nurseries as well and you know from people sharing the plants continue to be called Rex even though it might not be true to form. So that, that sounds a little really confusing so I'll try to break it down a bit further by going through the different name types showing you them on screen the leaf shapes so you can actually see a clear comparison between all the types. So whichever plant you're thinking about buying or whichever one you've already grown, if you've got a tetrapanax, whatever form you think it is or you know it to be, it's still the same species. It is tetrapanax papyrifera. And if you get seed from your plant, it will probably look like the parent, but there will be some variation if you grow on those seedlings. And you might eventually get a nice selected plant 
and it's got a different characteristics and that could be named something completely different and we could have a different tetrapanax form and especially if you've got uh, cross-pollination from two known forms so I've just been put off because there's a cow just behind staring at me over there yeah so the one behind me like I said I've been growing this for a number of years I bought this as Tetrapanax Rex because most people did. I think this is just a straight species. It's got nice big leaves. It's grown to a decent height, but it's not got those huge, huge leaves that have elongated lobes on it, which I would call the real Rex, or the Cornish Groove Rex, or the Paris Castle Rex. Basically, what I'm saying is it's quite confusing. Basically, if you want to buy a good plant, look at the mother plant, if that looks like a really good plant that you want to grow in your garden and grow the offspring of that plant or the root cuttings of that plant and it will grow like the mother plant and you'll be happy with what you got. If you buy something from an unknown seller and it's called Rex, it could be just a straight species, it could be Rex, it could be something different entirely. They're all going to be pretty similar to be honest. Uh, there's not a great deal of difference really apart from some are hardier than others and some get bigger than others. but all of them grow great big green lobed leaves which is what most people grow them for. It's only really if you're the collector and you want the different types uh, you'll seek out the different variations the different types of Tetrapanax. But like I keep saying it's all one species. This here is a typical Tetrapanax leaf and it's pretty much the outline of it is pretty much circular. We've got these nice wide lobes with different indentations on the side this is just Tetrapanax papyrifera, the straight species, this isn't Rex or any other form, it's just a general species. It's a great garden worthy plant. This is a sucker from the great big one that I just showed you early in the video and there's loads of suckers around the garden. So very good garden worthy plant, just be mindful of the fact that it does sucker when you damage the roots, when you're digging around it or other animals have been around and gone through the roots so it can spread quite a lot easy to look after, pretty hardy, this has survived minus 10 being totally fine. So the variability of variation in hardiness is from different seed collections. But this one I know is nice and hardy and all the offspring of this plant I know will be hardy as well. So let's look at the differences between the four main types starting with the general species Papyrifera. And you can see as there's a general round outline to the leaves and the leaves grow to about a metre across, so not the super huge leaves that you get in the other types. And it grows up to about two, maybe three metres tall at a push, but never sort of over four metres in height. And it's a bit variable in hardiness, sort of minus five to about minus ten-ish, maybe pushing it a little bit more than that, uh, but not down to minus fifteen. And it has a ginger endomentum, so the ginger sort of fuzziness to the to the leaves and the leaf stems as well and if we look at it when we're propagating it it propagates pretty easily from root cuttings and if it's disturbed ground you get lots of pups forming. Now we look at Rex and the big difference between Rex and the straight species is it grows bigger and it has a beige endomentum rather than ginger so that is a key difference between these two types and it has deeply cut lobes in the leaves when they mature and you do get suckers on this but less so than in the straight species. When we look at the next type we've got Empress and Empress can be very tall, can be over four meters in height and it is hardy down to minus 15 and lower so it's pretty much the hardiest type you can grow and the leaves are over a meter in diameter but not normally up to a meter and a half and again it has a ginger endomentum on empress as well and nicely deeply cut lobes on these as well and propagation it's pretty much difficult to propagate this from root cuttings and it doesn't necessarily put very easily either from disturbed ground so unlike the other types it's harder to propagate this one and then finally we come to the largest of all the four types although not in this image here and that is Mei Feng and this can grow again over four meters the stems hardy down to minus 15 ginger endomentum again 
very deeply cut lobes, but the actual leaf diameter can be well over a meter and a half across. So if you want to have the biggest leafed type of tetrapanax, then May Feng is a one to seek out. Thank you for watching this edition of Exotic Ghana UK. Join me next week, we'll be doing more in the garden.